so I, like I think it's all very interesting all of this about you know um, thicker commitments and uh, different things that libertarians tend to ignore and some of the more uh, ethical concerns that go into these social issues but I think there's been a pretty uh, devastating critique uh, on Facebook about how left libertarianism has uh, nothing to say about ethics and uh, it's basically just saying that whatever the market uh, does is, uh, is good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I just think that seems so, uh, somewhat problematic for this philosophy of thicker commitments and uh, indirect coercion. What, mm -hmm. what do you think of that? The, the great agra that is Facebook <laughs> of her philo philosophical symposiums in every thread yeah um yeah i mean i yeah i mean i've definitely talked with some folks about this on on facebook and elsewhere i fear that facebook is actually like systematically the worst possible medium for having uh involved discussions about this kind of stuff but uh for for various reasons but um uh so i mean broadly what i'd say is this that um Left libertarianism involves a claim that without state coercion and without various forms of legal privilege, there are a bunch of forms of sort of social and economic um, inequality and social and economic privilege that would tend to be systematically undermined, that would be much weaker than they are in society as it is. It do doesn't involve a claim that, that, you know, just freeing the market and seeing whatever will happen uh, you know, without your without your intervention when markets are free, is is what either free market anti capitalism in particular or what left libertarianism uh, is all about. That's that's not the end of the day for either of those views. Um, and so I think it is true that if you get rid of it's it's and it's really important not to forget this. It's the reason that we stress so much the importance of like the you know state monopoly and upholding capitalist privilege, for example is not to suggest that, you know, in in a society freed of, of government intervention and regulation, that the freed market would automatically solve, you know, um, every social problem, every form of inequality, cancer, tooth decay, um, and and the you know, that the, the, the seas would become the temperature and, and flavor of lemonade. Um, oh, the, that's so badly. the um <laughs> The specific claim is that there's a bunch of stuff that would tend to sort of systematically get better just in virtue of kicking out the supports from uh, institutions that are actively making it crappier. Uh, and so there are a lot of forms of privilege that would tend to sort of sink and falter under their own weight without sort of, you know, the ongoing efforts of the states to, of the state to subsidize them and to burn out the competitors. But that whatever forms of social inequality and whatever social in evils would remain, and there'd be plenty that, that would remain, even if in a weaker form, are things that um, libertarians ought to take a direct hand in organizing, um, you know, organizing sort of nonviolent social uh, confrontation uh, against that, that, you know, uh, where these things don't fall under their own weight, we have a responsibility to to get together and push them over. Um, and you know that um, that means a serious commitment to uh, grassroots uh, grassroots community organizing and to social activism within the context of this free market that we're that we're imagining. Um, but you know, I mean, that's something that I've, at least, that I've always tried to emphasize in my work. It's really important that you know, if your if your worry is about well, what you know, who will, who will stop the the, uh, who will stop the rich from running everything uh, in a free society? Part of the answer has to be that we will. Um, and and there are straightforward ways in which it's connected with, um, you know, this commitment to sort of the radical possibilities of free market social activism. You know that is is closely connected with seeing that you know being in favor of market relationships is not the same thing as just you know like kicking back and saying well I don't have to lift a finger because the market is going to take care of all my problems for me. I mean mar market forces market just are up. They're, they're 
you know, they're, they're people acting rationally in the world. And, um, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't just be consumers of social conditions, but entrepreneurs mm -hmm. of social conditions. So if, uh, you know, so, so that's going to mean things like mutual aid societies, like forming up uh, uh, fighting unions, neighborhood associations. It's going to mean feminist activism, culture jamming, uh, consciousness raising, um, uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of zaps and activism and, and sort of building counter institutions um, that are that are uh, uh, um, uh, that are you know sort of in the hands of of ordinary folk rather than in the hands of um, uh, sort of a, a socially or economically privileged bureaucracy, um, and uh, that yeah. So so that in, any any conception that takes market relationships fully seriously is going to have to include um, is going to have to include social activism as as an essential component of a flourishing free society, not not something that we're like bringing bringing market relationships in. Like instead of because we don't want to get our dirty with that stuff. Um, it's it's stuff that that you know can can and and should and almost certainly will be happening um, in a in a free market society. And if you don't see it happening, then you know the the solution is is to be the change to to be the one that makes it happen.